Hi everyone, I'm Paul with Madcap Software. Welcome to part three of our e-learning video series on learning and development in Flare. In this video, I'm gonna talk about creating e-learning content. And uh, I'm talking more than just about the questions and answers that you insert into Flare. Uh, of course, that is the heart. That is the heart of your course. You definitely need and want that, but it's more than that. Um, that's not real life to just go, all right, here's how you insert the thing, boom, you're on your way. Uh, it, takes, it takes more. And so what I'm actually going to do in this video, we're going to get into Flair, and I don't have any grand plan here. I'm just going to take you into it like I would approach it and, uh, and ask and answer the questions along the way and create the content, and we'll see how it goes. It's going to be fun or a train wreck. We'll see. Either way, we're going to do it. So let's hop in. And the first thing, tell you what, the first thing that we'll do is when I look, when I would look at uh, the content, we, we just created a, a project, right? So I want to know, all right, what things in there do I want to keep? What things do I want to cut? What things do I want to change? So let's, let's do that. Let's play um, keep, cut, change. Sounds good. All right, so let's play Keep Cut Change. Uh, we're gonna hop into Flare and just go from there. Okay, so this is where we left off in our last video, um, except I don't have the project open, but this is the project that we, we created. I'm just gonna click that and open it up. You can see everything populated. All right, so the first thing that I, I wanna do is figure out what things do I wanna keep? What things do I wanna cut or get rid of? What things do I wanna change? So even though I'm gonna be talking about building output, viewing output later in the course, I'm gonna kind of cheat and jump ahead and do a preliminary build and view right away because I wanna see what this template has to offer me, what it's got in it, and that will give me a really good idea uh, I can make decisions as I'm looking at the output. So I'm going to just go in here and, and I've got different targets in this template already. And I'm just going to click this one, this online combination course, because that's got, that's got the most stuff in it. And it's going to give me a pretty good idea. So this is going to build really quickly here. It's a tiny little project. And once it's done, I'm just going to double click this and it's going to open up in the browser window. So it is all done. I'm going to open it and I need to move this over into this monitor. There we go. OK, so this is our course. <clears throat> so opening page. All right. This is about the city of Austin, Texas. OK, so I got this stuff, got my header, got got this uh, big image, which is called a hero image. And the name of the course there, a little bit of text, start course. Okay, I'm looking at this and going, okay, well, I like this page. And I did create the project based on this template for a reason. I didn't want the navigation, you know, the full TOC on the left or anything. But I do like this. I, I, I want to swap out. I know I'm going to swap out my uh, logo and I'm going to change the text here. And I'm going to need to change the hero image. Um, because I'm going to be talking about something else. Tell you what, this is city is this uh, course is about the city of Austin, Texas. Let's just keep going with this city theme. And let's say I'm going to say that I want to create a project where I have multiple courses because that's probably more what's going to happen in in the real world for me is I would have to create multiple courses. But let's keep going with this city theme. Let's say I'm not going to write about the city of Austin, Texas, but I want to write about San Diego and maybe another course about New York and another course about Chicago. So I am going to keep this, um, I'm, but I'm going to change out the image and the text in here and I'll change a little bit of the text in here, but otherwise I like it. Also, I'm going to say that uh, my color scheme is different and it's orange. Okay, so I'm going to be changing some things that are, we got this blue thing going on here. I'm going to change some things to orange. Um, maybe not all of it. Maybe we'll, we'll see. All right, so I'm going to click course and go through it. All right, so here's the first page. 
Just got some basic text in here. There's my e-learning ribbon we talked about before. We've got color scheme going on down here too. So I'm gonna change the color scheme of that, but otherwise I like it. Come in here. All right, so in these project templates for e-learning, we just inserted some different features just to give you a taste of some of the things that Flare can do. Not everything that Flare can do because Flare can do a whole bunch, but you know, just give you an idea of some, some of what you can do. So this one is shows two tiles. It's got a tile on the left with some text and one on the right with where we put an image. And the cool thing here is uh, this is responsive, which means people look at it on a small screen, a cell phone, and the tiles will, will stack on top of one another. So it's easier to read. So I'm just reading content in here. Click next. All right, I got a knowledge check. Okay, so question, answer. And what's the capital of Texas? I know it's Austin. I click submit. Oh, it gives me instant feedback. I like that for a knowledge check. <clears throat> got an image in here. I'll either need to replace or get rid of that. Um, got to have to answer this question. This is, uh, I believe that's the right one. No, <laughs> it's long, hot summer. Oh, I forgot the short, mild winters. It would have been that one. All right, click next. Hot spot pop-ups. This is another feature that I put into the template and it just shows that uh, you can create uh, this pop-up effect where you got these this topic open and this is an image with hot spots. And you click that and you get another topic that pops up to give you information. And you click that and go away and go, ah, that's pretty cool. But the good, just going back to the uh, two tiles and this one, I'm thinking, okay, these are really cool. Maybe I'll use them in the future, but I'm not going to use them now. So I'm probably going to get rid of these things. All right. So then I go into next and we got drop downs. All right. Another feature, uh, click it to expand and collapse. That's pretty neat. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to, I'm maybe not in all of my course content, but I want to do that in some of them. So I'm going to, I'm going to do some drop downs. Click next. I'm to my second knowledge check. All right. What's Austin known as live music capital of the world? That is correct. What music events? It's got these two. That's correct. Next. All right. Another feature that we got are these cool slideshows that you can insert. It's just another way to display content. People move through it like this. Yeah, <clears throat> that's cool. But I decide I'm not going to include that either. So I'm going to get rid of that. Video. You can insert videos. All right. And this one happens to be linked to YouTube. And I'm thinking, yeah, I do have some videos I want to include. So I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep doing videos. Click next. iframe. Really, really cool feature. You can insert a link to an external website and just look at it right there and scroll through it. That's pretty cool. Maybe I'll use that in the future. I'm going to get rid of it for this. For, for my project. All right, coming through here, I've already identified some stuff I'm gonna change, some stuff I'm gonna get rid of, um, <clears throat> and stuff I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna keep. And, and then I'm also going to be, um, you know, adding new things like these in my project. So now here, here I am to the test, all right. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have tests or quizzes for uh, learners get here to the opening page of it. All right, got to answer, what's the capital of uh, Texas? That's Austin, what's, who's the father? Stephen F. Austin, although I was tempted to choose the first one. Um, what's the muse are held? Uh, yeah, that's that and that. And Austin's climate is that. And what are not official slogans for Austin? Well, even though it's got good barbecue, it's not that, it's not urban bat colonies. I got 100%, clicked the last thing, and now I've got my test results. All right, looks pretty good. And I like the test results, and I could do a complete customization of this, but I actually pr like it pretty well. It, it helps me get going really quick. The only thing is I probably, I need to put in my course name, and I need to change the color of that. Okay, so there we go. We have identified some things that we want to keep, cut, and change. All right, so that's the first part of it. 
So now what we need to do is we need to go into Flare and we need to look at that content. And first of all, I'm gonna look at the, at the file level and then get down into the content in, in them and just start working away at them. So that's what we're gonna do next. Let's look at uh, folders and folders and uh, topic files. Okay, so now that we've gone through that exercise, we sort of have a plan and to move forward. So let's go back into Flare and let's look at uh, our folder situation and file situation, see what we need to change around. Okay, so back in Flare, first of all, I'm gonna close this window pane down at the bottom to give me more room. And what I'm looking at over here is my content explorer. And I do have these folders in here for course content, knowledge check, and test. And I like that because it kind of separates these, even though these are all part of the test, all part of the course, uh, it just kind of helps organize them like that. I like that. But remember, I said, I want to do multiple courses and one for the city of San Diego, one for Chicago, one for New York. So I'm going to have multiple sets of these uh, of, of content. And so maybe I wanna go a level deeper and organize. I'm gonna create some more folders here. I'm gonna create one for San Diego. Let's see. Typing at a weird angle here. Oops. Yeah, really, I gotta figure this out. There, I can spell. All right, so I got San Diego. And uh, I am also remember the um, the naming conventions. I like to put dashes uh, hyphens between these. Oops! I clicked. I had my um, cursor on San Diego, and I said new folder, and it put one underneath San Diego, and I didn't want that. So I'm gonna click delete right here. So when you're creating the new folders at that level, you want to click on content. So I'm gonna create one here for Chicago. And another one, click on content and do another one for New York. Okay, so <clears throat> the first set of, uh, of, of uh, folders here, I do want to use, but I'm gonna place these in, uh, I'm gonna place these in my San Diego one because that's the one I'm gonna work on first. I'm just gonna click and drag that one and it's gonna bring up this, uh, dialogue because there's all these links going on. It's going to say, hey, you're moving things. Do you want to update it? Yeah. Update my links for me, please. And it does. It moves that down here. I'm going to move this one also down into San Diego, update my links. <clears throat> and I'm going to move the course test down here also. All right. And so that gives me that course that course material for San Diego under there. And so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create the ki same kind of structure up under Chicago and New York over time. All right, so I did that, but first we're gonna focus on San Diego. <clears throat> I'm gonna come into course content. And uh, these, were, these were all of those uh, topics that were showing you the different features. And I can open each one of these just to, to remind myself of what they contain, but a lot of them are pretty easy to figure out from the name of the file. And I go, okay, course title. I definitely want that. Uh, I am going to change the word um, Austin. We're going to come back to content later. Right now we're dealing with files and folders. All right. But I know that I, I want to keep that. And I know I wanted to keep just text. I didn't want to keep the two tiles and the hotspot pop-ups and these three topics go with that those pop-ups and I want to keep the drop downs and the slideshow and I, do, I don't want to keep the slideshow I want to keep the video I don't want to keep the iframe now I could still keep some of these files and just replace the content in them or I could get rid of the files the topics all together so let's say that um, I do want to, so I don't want to keep the uh, two tiles, but I want to maybe, I'm going to rename these things also. You know, that's another part of this. So just text, 
you know, one, one of my pages isn't going to be called just text. Let's say for San Diego, uh, I want to talk about the history. And notice I put the numbers in the names of these topics. Well, you don't have to do that. That just kind of was helping me understand the order in which I plan to have them in the course. You can do whatever you want, but I'm going to keep that because I kind of like that. So I'm just going to change this one, the name I highlighted, just that but part before the .htm, and I'm going to change this to history. And actually, we talked about naming conventions before. Uh, this is for San Diego. I'm going to have similar kinds of topics for New York and Chicago. So maybe I should establish a naming convention here where I'll use SD for San Diego at the beginning of all of these topics. I could do that. So I could type it like this. Oops. Boy, I really got to straighten out here. All right, SD dash uh, history. And again, it's changing that, so I got to update my links. There we go. And I could change my course title also to say SD. And update my links. <clears throat> All right, so the two tiles, maybe I don't want to keep the content in there. I'm going to change the content. And I'll, I'll say that this, uh, the topic, uh, the title of this is uh, music. All right, and once again, update the links. Okay, so you get you get the idea and you just kind of go on down the line. Now, some of these I could just go, I, I'm just not gonna use them. Uh, I'm not gonna change any and the content. Oh, I just wanna get rid of the topics. So you can right click on this and say delete. <clears throat> and again, these are linked to things. These are linked to the TOC and it's saying, hey, do you wanna remove the links or? not remove the links. And I'm going to say remove the links. I'm going to I'm going to deal with the TOC later. I just want to get rid of that. Now I could do that one at a time getting rid of things, but here's a neat trick. If you need to do something like this for multiple topics, click this little button up here and I got my uh, folder selected on the left and this shows all the stuff in it. And now I can do a multi select and I'm going to hold down my shift key and select those. I want to get rid of those. I want to get rid of my slideshow, holding down the control key, getting rid of iframe, click delete. Okay. It's going to bring this up again. I'm going to say, remove my links. And I'm going to click this again to go back to the other view. So I've got the start of this. Now the drop downs, I am going to name this something else. Uh, let's see. Um, let's do four change the number here to four and do beer. San Diego is known for a lot of breweries and we're going to update the links there. And, uh, you know, I'll change this to um, do something about the zoo, San Diego Zoo. All right. All right. So change my file name. So you're going to do the same kind of thing. Now I could do I could change, uh, I could call these first knowledge, I could keep the names, first knowledge check, second knowledge check, and, uh, but I could just, I could put that SD on to the front of them. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to spend time doing that because you've seen my typing skills when I'm at an angle here. <clears throat> Course uh, text, test here. Yeah, I do want to have these and I'm going to keep these topics because I am going to have several questions in my test, but of course this is about San Diego. So I'm just going to change uh, the title of this. And I, and I could have just done SD too. All right. So <clears throat> I've got these changed here. Um, and then I'm also probably going to be adding new topics uh, from time to time because there might be you know a lot more course content that I want. Maybe there's more knowledge checks. Let's say that I want an additional knowledge check, a third knowledge check. Well, here's a way to create uh, a topic. You just right click on that folder, select new, 
and topic. And I want this to be called third knowledge check. So here we go with typing again. Now I could click add at this point and it's gonna create the um, topic and this will be the main heading, but I don't want this. I do want the hyphens in my file name, but not in the heading. So I'm just going to type the same thing without the hyphens. Okay, and then click add, <clears throat> and there it is. And then I'll just, I'll just later, I'll add my content. So there we go. Uh, one other thing is that you can also make copies of, uh, of files in order to create new ones. For example, you go into one of these test um, topics in here, and this just has one you know, one just one question answer. All right, I could I could make a copy of this, uh, but there is a special thing to consider when you're doing that when it when it's got question sections in here like this. So I'm going to make a copy of this so that I I can easily just go in and replace the questions and answers and do something else. But later on, when we get into the question sections and we go through this, I'm going to show you why you need to be careful when you are making copies of, uh, of topics or making copies of these question sections. All right, so I'm going to select question five, control C, control V on my keyboard. Does this, I'm just going to change this to question five or six. And there we go. All right, so we have kept some stuff. We have gotten rid of some stuff and we've changed some stuff at the folder and file level. Now, again, I will be you know, creating this in the future for Chicago and New York, but we can wait for that later. In fact, when the time comes, I could make a copy of my course content folder here and paste it into Chicago and paste it in New York. And I've got the stuff already. I just need to change the file names and the content in them. All right, so you can do that. That is a very common thing to do um, in order to create your files quickly. Okay, so that is the first part, folders and files. So next we wanna talk about uh, actually changing some content. We're going to change content. And then maybe after that, we'll add some new content. So let's move on to the next section. Okay, so we decided what to keep cut change. And now uh, we have also gone into folders and files, taking care of that. Now we want to get into the content level. And we want to change some things because uh, we want to put in our own course content instead of what was in the template. So let's pop back into Flare. Now back into Flare, you notice that I, it still has, we got our couple of things open that we had open before. And I, I don't, I tend not to like clutter. If you're like me, um, then you don't either. And, but as you open things that you're going to get a whole bunch of tabs in here. So periodically, I like to just close everything that's open. I mean, this isn't bad, but sometimes you get a whole bunch of them in there. So real quick tip here, this is an aside, but it's, it's just good to know this as you're, as you're working, you know, whether it's on a course or something else, go into the window ribbon and you got this close all documents or close all, but this close all, but whatever is open. And I like this so much. In fact, that I added it up here into my custom um, the toolbar at the top, you can click that right click a button and say, select add to quick access toolbar and it'll add it up there. So I tend to like to use this, this as well as applying conditions and I added these buttons. So I'm just going to click that and it closes them all. Okay, that was just an aside. Now, I have my topics over here. And I know that this is the order because I use the number one through five here. And um, I just kind of need to work through these and the, you know, this other stuff and replace the content. 
And I'm not going to replace everything. That would take too long in this video. But just to give you an idea here, I open up the first one. And of course, yeah, this is about the city of Austin, Texas. And maybe I like, you know, the other content. I If I don't like the content at all, I just go in and, of course, you replace it. But sometimes you just want to swap out certain phrases. And that you're going to find that you need to do this from time to time. So on your home ribbon, you can select find and replace. I'm going to go here and it's got Austin, Texas already preloaded in here. And I, I, I'm going to replace it with San Diego, California. And then I got to ask myself, do, where do I want to change this? The whole project. Sometimes I'll do it in documents in the same folder. But in this case, this is a new project. And, um, you know, I'm going to be going through it all to check it anyway. And so I might as well do the whole project. Um, match case, yeah, uh, because these should be capitalized, but I could just do this. And if it's lowercase anywhere, it'll pick it up too, but it probably not. It, it's probably not that way. Now I could just go through these find next, go through them one at a time, or I could select find all. And you can see it has found multiple places. Uh, where I've got Austin, Texas in there. I want to replace it with San Diego, California. And so sometimes if you get these and it's like, if you get thousands of results, you may not feel confident about replacing all of them in one batch because you're not sure about the context. But if you just look through this, I can scan these, I can see the context and I know, yeah, I absolutely don't want Austin, Texas anywhere. And I, like I said, I'm going to review all these anyway, one file by one. So I'm just going to do a replace all. And it gives me this um, dialogue that lets you know, hey, we're going to change this stuff. You can't undo it. And I go, yeah, I understand. Um, I won't sue you or anything. And I'm going to close this. It replaced them. And so there's San Diego, California, and it should already be done in other places as well. All right. So I'm going to keep this other content in here just to give you an idea. We're going to go to the next one. And so I would just change like uh, here. I'm going to just change this to history. And then this content down here, I'm sure I would have some content. I'm just going to. I, I'm, again, I'm not going to change everything. I'm just going to type San Diego content. And uh, and just kind of leave it at that. We're going to keep it, <laughs> of course, yeah, that's kind of silly, just three words like that. But um, that's where you would put it. You're just putting your content. In this case, it's just text. Now I go into music, and this is the one where I decided, hey, I want to keep um, I'm going to keep this topic, but I'm going to change out this text and I don't want those tiles down there. So first of all, I'm going to change this to music. <clears throat> and let's add a, just a simple thing here. The music scene in San Diego. Austin's known for that. I don't know about how much San Diego is, but we're going to do it. Now, I want to get rid of some content. So, you know, just like anything else, you can you can select it and delete. Um, and I want to get rid of all this stuff down here. Don't worry about those colors and stuff. Um, you know, get to that later. You, I, I could just go through and select all that and click, um, you know, press delete. But you can also use these structure bars, right click and say delete there too. I do that a lot, but I want to replace all this. So I'm just going to select it and delete. And okay, so it didn't get the, this note part. So I'm just going to right click that P tag and go like that. All right, so this is very, very simple content, but it's just to give you an idea. Of course, I'm going to be adding things in the future. I'm going to go in here and you know I'm going to type more text and I might insert an image and you know, all, all, all kinds of different things in, in real life, but we're not going to spend all of our time on that. I just want to see what else. Um, yeah. So the drop downs, I did want to keep the drop downs. I'm going to get rid of that. No, I'm going to, um, and so instead of drop downs, this is beer. And then we're going to just do stuff about beer. 
And so um, maybe these drop downs, I want one of these. This is the hot spot right here. And I'm going to just select that text. And maybe this is, you know, a, a brewery. And then I've got, you know, I can go in and just type. Uh, all right, content about that brewery. And then same thing on the second one. And I could actually, you can copy. I really like using these structure bars. So I could go in and I could just copy the text and, um, or I, I could just replace the text. Another thing that you can do is I'm going to right click. Notice I'm right clicking on the structure bars. And if I, I'm right clicking on this outer one, that if I click that, that selects the whole thing. So I know it's that whole thing. If I just do that one, it's that. If I just do that one, it's that thing. So I'm going to do the outer one. I'm going to delete that. And then I can go in here and I can right click and I can say copy and I can do this, right click, paste after, change that to brewery two. That was just for me to get to where I want quicker than having to do a bunch of typing. And yeah, so just changing out that information. Now let's go to this one. I'm gonna get rid of this, find and replace window pane video. So this is about the San Diego Zoo. And we'll say that I'm gonna keep the note, but I'm just gonna replace the text with, um, Stuff about the zoo now, and these things are uh, the you're seeing these colors because these are conditions, right? And uh, <clears throat> so you're going to learn more about that when we get into single sourcing into into that video. I'm just going to kind of keep this stuff, but uh, I want to change the link for the video. Let's say that I like this and. I want to replace this. Now, what, the, what these conditions mean in here, just real quick, this is showing you that this content right here, I'm just gonna provide this link if this is in my PDF output, my print output, because the video isn't gonna play in my PDF. But in my online output, I want the video here. So in one case, I'm just gonna have the, the link here. And in the other case, I'm gonna have the actual video. All right. so. I am going to pause this briefly and I got need to go find a YouTube video to replace this with. Okay, so I found a video on Madcap uh, software, uh, customer success stories, and I'm just going to select that and replace it with that. And I'm gonna also right click this. Um, actually, I'm gonna right click, see this A thing up here, that, that's my link. And I'm going to right click that and edit my hyperlink. I just want to make sure it's the same, that it, it's not only what displays, but it is what's up in here. And so it's this old link is here and I'm going to replace that. All right. That's OK. So that takes care of that. All right. So you're getting a little bit more information here than normally would get in an e-learning uh, video that I planned. But this is real life. Okay, so now the actual video that's in here, I'm gonna right click this and I'm gonna say edit multimedia and I am going to replace my YouTube link with the new one. Okay, and click okay. And there is the actual, there's my new video. All right, so these are just things you gotta do to replace content. Now I'm gonna go into my first knowledge check and I am going to, um, so this is about the city of San Diego. And so I would uh, ask a question about uh, what is, uh, you know, the motto for San Diego. And it is um, one answer, America's finest city. And then I could just put in, again, I'm, I'm just going to type in some gibberish here, type in other answers. And so I'm just replacing something that was already set up. One of these 
e-learning question sections. And we're gonna go through and we're gonna add a new one so you see how this happens. But now that I've got this and there's only one answer is this, I click that to let it know that is the correct answer. And then I could go and I've got this feedback text down here and I can say, I just wanna get rid of that. And this is the feedback that's gonna show when it's correct. This is gonna be the one that's incorrect. Um, and then I could just, you know, add whatever text I want in here. And there's a submit button. Uh, this this image is for Austin, Texas. I'm going to right click. I can actually right click the image and say delete and maybe backspace or just do. There we go. I just press delete and got rid of that. So now I get do and I, I, I can go down here and I can do the same thing here. Again, I'm not going to go in and type actual content. <laughs> this is this is pretty, isn't it? This uh, wish I could do all my typing like that. All right. And then you just go in. This is a multiple choice up here. This is a multiple response. And maybe the correct answers are these two. And again, you change your feedback. And I want to get rid of that. And this one, just something there. All right. So I'm, I'm just changing out the content, but how do you add these things in the first place? Well, we'll talk about that in the next section where we add new content. Uh, for now, we're just replacing some content. Now, one of the things, uh, no, I'll talk about it later because I did make I did make the change to this third knowledge check. I I um, I copied it from another one, and I told you to watch out for something. We'll 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 cover that later. For now, I am just going to keep all of this stuff as it is because it would take me forever to go through and change it in this video. Just wanted to show you this is what we're talking about. You are just swapping out information. Now we've swapped out some content. In the next section, let's add some content. Let's add. Um, regular course content, but let's also add a couple of these question sections so that you can see how that happens from scratch. Okay, so we just finished changing some content. Let's go in and let's start adding some new content. Okay, so first of all, let's consider our course content up here. Remember, there were some features that we thought, hey, we, we might want to reuse those. And one of those was uh, uh, drop downs. OK, so let's go into this history uh, topic. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to type a little bit here. So let's say I want to add a couple of drop downs, one on uh, San Diego's the founding years and then the boom. I don't know if I don't know if San Diego had a boom lived there for a long time, but I don't know. OK, so I'm going to press enter. I'm going to just type uh, founding years. And then there's going to be content down there. And then I'm going to type a uh, boom years. And some gibberish. About that. So I want to turn these things into those drop downs that we saw. So I'm going to select that. This is the first group. And the first paragraph is going to become my hotspot by default. I'm going to go into insert, select drop down. That's done. Boom years, do the same thing. Done. That's how you do something like that. If I wanted to insert a video like I did before, I would be using this multimedia thing. Or I could just go in if if I'm like I like how it's set up the size and everything. I could just go in and I could make a copy. I could again. I like to use these structure bars. Right click this outermost one and say copy, and then I go paste it somewhere and then change out the link. That's just an easy way to add new content. All right, so I added some course content there just real briefly. Let's go back in to the knowledge check. And so we've got this first knowledge check and we've got a couple in here already. We've got a response um, and we've got a multiple choice and a multiple response. And let's add another. So here's one of the things that will happen is, <clears throat> notice you, you have all these tags that are associated with this section in here. It's just broken down by all these individual tags. And so what you want to do is you want to get below 
the block where you want to insert a new one. Let's say I want to insert a new one between these two. I'm going to click as close as I can to the end. My cursor's there. What I can do is just use my arrow keys on my, um, on my keypad till I get this cursor down here. Notice this outer structure bar is selected and I just press enter. Now I'm at a new blank section. So that's one way to do it. Uh, and then I want to add new question sections. So I'm gonna to go to e-learning. Finally, we're in the e-learning stuff. Uh, knew we'd get there. And let's say I wanna add another multiple choice. So I can just click this and uh, I'm not even gonna go through and, you know, <laughs> I'll, add, I'll, I'll add a question mark. There we go, I did work. It change out the, the first answer, type, or press enter, do the second one, press enter. There's a third one. And now I select which one of these is correct. Maybe this one is correct. Okay, so I'm in a knowledge check. Do I wanna add feedback? Yeah, these others have feedback. So I can do a couple of things. I can click add feedback alone, and that'll just add these placeholder things here. One of these is for the correct response. One of these is for the incorrect response. And I could do that, or I could just click this add submit button and it's gonna add all of that. It's just kind of a quicker way to do it. So I click add submit, there's my placeholder content. <clears throat> and then you just change out this content. I'm just gonna leave this for now and it adds my submit button. So you see how easy that was. Now let's go and do another one. Again, I put my cursor there, press down arrow till I get to that, press enter. Let's do a multiple response. Same thing, go in here, I'll do my work. I'll add a question mark, <clears throat> press enter, stuff, press enter, there's another answer. Which one, now I can select multiple ones. That one and that one are correct. Again, I can add my feedback. So if I, if I just add it, clicked add feedback, it's just adding these two things. This is for the correct answer. This is for the incorrect answer. Then I could manually add my submit button. It adds it below it. There you go. That's all you do. <clears throat> or maybe I decide, hey, I want to, I changed my mind. I don't want this to be a multiple response. <clears throat> I want this to be multiple choice. So what I could do is I'm inside, my cursor is inside, so I could just right click and say switch to multiple choice. And then I you know, choose which is the right answer. So you can do that. All right, so that's a real quick way to add these question sections in here. You can see it's, it's super easy. If I were to open up, uh, well, actually I added this new one, question six. This is for my test. <clears throat> you can see that uh, notice that I have Austin in here. It didn't, I, it didn't change to San Diego. That's because before I just searched for Sandy, I searched for Austin, Texas. I didn't search for Austin. So once I see this, I'm probably gonna go back into my find and replace and just look for Austin for uh, instances of that, just to change it real uh, quickly. Uh, or if I'm just changing all the content anyway, I may not do that. All right, so in these test areas, it's the same thing. This is a multiple response, but I just don't have the feedback. I don't have, and the submit button. Now I could add the feedback. Uh, I could, uh, let's, let's actually do it on question one because that's the first thing we'll see in the results. I could add feedback here like this, and this will show up, the feedback will show up in the test results at the end. I just don't wanna add the submit button because I don't want people to see in my gradable quiz, I don't want them to see the answer right away. All right, so that's that. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go up here and click save all, save all my changes. Now, another thing I want to take a look at is you just kind of move through the e-learning toolbar uh, ribbon from left to right. We've already talked about these buttons. Let's go to question properties. And that opens up the question properties window pane over here. And you can see <clears throat> that this is going to give me certain information about the, uh, the thing that I'm on. Let's go back to one of the knowledge checks. It'll be easier to see 
the difference here. So go up to the first one and I click on that and you can see that it, this first thing says multiple response question. Well, it's deselected because it's multiple choice. If I went down and selected a multiple response, that would be selected, okay? I can also specify and it tells you, uh, here's your content, here's the, you know, the answer that you're on. If I clicked on one of these that's marked as correct, you're gonna see it's marked as a correct answer. So there's different settings in here. Now, another thing that I could do is maybe in my knowledge checks, I don't want uh, I don't want these to be uh, required. You know, if people want to go through them, they can. If they, you know, just want to click next at the bottom of the at the bottom of the page, they can. Well, this right here shows it's required. This marker. That Flare has all kinds of markers and you can turn, it's not gonna show up in the output, um, but it, it's an indicator for you to let you know what you've, what you've got here. And you can turn markers on and off through this thing right here. And you see it went away, um, but I like to see it. I like to know what's going on. So it's required. Well, if I want this to be optional, I just come over here and set this to false. This changes to optional and I could go through for, all of these if I wanted to and change them to optional or required. So the uh, question properties window pane is can be really handy for that. The other thing that we wanna point out is this question ID. All right, so you're seeing that as I click on different questions, so I clicked on this one and you can see what the, let's move this out so you can see the whole thing. It's this long number here. If I click on a different one, that changes, the question ID changes. So these should be unique for each question so that they're tracked separately, individually. Well, remember back in the long, long ago when I made a copy of question five and I named it question six. Okay, first of all, we're getting a lot of clutter here. Let's move all this stuff, close all this stuff. Let's open up question five. I made a copy of this and there is this one. I didn't even bother. I didn't even change that to question six yet. I'll do that now. So if I click in here, you can see what the ID is. If I go to question five and click in there, it's the same ID. So that is the thing you need to watch out for when you're making copies of topics that have you know, question sections in them. You need to remember to go in and, and generate a new ID. So this is the copy, the question six, and I just click generate ID. So now I'm good. And the same thing can happen if I were to go, hey, I want multiple questions on this topic. And I could right click this outer structure bar and say copy, and I could say paste after. So now I've got two copies, click in that one. If I click in this one, that actually changed automatically. So that's kind of cool. It changed the, the ID for me. And now I can go in and I just want to make sure that these IDs are unique. unique. So the, the thing is, when you're copying files, you want to make sure that you remember to go and do that. Otherwise, it's not going to be tracked individually. All right. Now, we have covered all these things on the e-learning ribbon, we've covered the question properties. We are going to get into these other things now in the following uh, videos where we are going to start looking at the flow of the course. And that involves our TOC and creating the test. And then we're gonna, and we're gonna look at these things about uh, the navigation and the test results, but we're going to do those in other videos. That's going to do it for this video. Uh, just keep going for the next one, and we are going to look at updating a TOC.